I thought that this game was going to sacrifice a lot of its quality in order to just shell out for money from the player. What's going on, internet? Hope your day is going well. And today, I ventured into the world of Hoyoverse to find if this is finally the Hoyoverse game that can convince me that I truly can like Hoyoverse games. That's right, today's video is Zenless Zone Zero, and I am super excited to have the opportunity to test it. I've been eyeballing this game for roughly two years now since I first heard about it, and I was waiting patiently for the day that I had the opportunity to finally get to play this game. Because admittedly, I have sold off every single Hoyoverse game that has ever come before, and for reasons that probably were not fully justified because I had never even given them a fair chance, to be completely honest. I had tried Genshin, and I probably got only an hour into it, and to be completely honest, Honkai Star Rail kind of came out of left field, and I did not know it existed for the longest time. And so when I saw this game being revealed in its trailers, I was like, this looks amazing. And so I wanted to be able to try it to be able to see if I can truly enjoy one of the games that they make. So will I be able to fully say that I like this game by the end of this video? Guess we'll find out. If you like this video and you want to stay notified, on all the other videos that we make on this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button so that way you can stay up to date on every single upload that goes live. Now with the video, let's talk about the story and the premise of this game first. Zenless Zone Zero looks to be a game that takes place in this near future high-tech-esque era where our main protagonist of the game is Faithen. They are one of two siblings that you have the option to choose from, either the male or female option, and they are considered a proxy. Proxies are individuals that guide people through what they call the hollow. The hollows are these supernatural dimensions that appear seemingly out of thin air containing enemies known as ethereals. This became so widespread that most of civilization ended up getting destroyed by it, except for the main city in which the game takes place, known as New Eridu, which they have managed to learn how to extract resources from out of the hollow in order to benefit off of the disaster. And you, the player, are considered to be one of the best at doing that. However, in a scenario where you're helping out one of the groups known as the Cunning Hares rescue an item from the hollow, you manage to get your entire system hacked, and the only way that you're able to recover it is by giving over your internet account, basically the Facebook of these proxies and give up control of it over to them. And so you do that. You complete the mission that you're on and the day is saved. However, your account is not. And all of the fame and notoriety that you had gained is now completely gone. And you have to build up for yourself a new name, one that you get to choose and venture forth as you start another journey of taking your account from basically a nobody to being as revered as your one that you had before. And that's the general story of what I've got thus far. And honestly, I like it. A huge presupposition that I had about this game was that because it had the title Gotcha tagged onto it, I thought that this game was going to sacrifice a lot of its quality in order to just shell out for money from the player. So in that, I thought that the story was going to be overall kind of lacking, and that is certainly not the case, and I am thoroughly impressed at what it's been giving me thus far. On top of the story of you and your sibling trying to recreate the account that they had once lost in fame, there's also this exposition as to the world that we have thus far, and how not everything is as it seems in this world. And so while it's not the most masterpiece of stories that I've seen in gaming history, it is definitely one that keeps me engaged with the world that it has, and I love it, and I'm interested to see how it plays out. But speaking of playing, let's talk about the INCREDIBLY FLASHY GAMEPLAY. I would describe this game at its core as an action RPG that also has a little bit of what I would want to call puzzle navigating. For 90% of the gameplay, you're playing as what the game calls agents. Individuals with <coughs> <clears throat> diverse skill sets, where every single character has an elemental affinity that they have, whether it just be fire, ice, shock, ether, or just straight up raw damage. And then at the same time, you have classes that the characters slot into, and so you'll make your way into the hollow, fight a couple of bad guys, get what you need to do, and get out. But it must be said again, this game's combat is so flashy. On the surface, it can be very easy for this game to feel like a button masher, where you're just really spamming one or two real buttons the entirety of the game. But there's actually a surprising level of depth when it comes to the combat and utilizing your characters party compositions wisely utilizing your dodge timing and your assist timings properly to be able to get the most out of your damage this is a game where if you really want to you can just get by spamming one button but there's going to be a level where if you want to get the most out of your performance you're gonna have to learn the ins and outs of the game systems from the elemental resistances to learning how to best utilize your party composition to have the most success and now while that is a large portion of the gameplay there's also the hollow exploration portion 
portion that makes up a good chunk of the rest of the gameplay that we see in the game thus far. For as much as the individual agents are doing their job just wrecking face in the hollow, there's a proxy that's you that's guiding them through the hollow to make sure that they can get what they need and get out safely. And that is the other portion of the game where you're exploring as the proxy navigating the team through the hollow. The game places you in this large grid-like area that you navigate through with each and every single cell potentially having something different like the possibility to heal your entire party, stumbling across an enemy encounter where now you have to go back into combat to finish that before you can continue navigating. Or you can even find currency that you can use either in the actual area that you're navigating through yourself or some of it you can take out of the hollow to be able to use just as for normal play purposes. And while I am enjoying it and having a lot of fun with it, I do think it's interesting the two different types of gameplay that make up the bulk of the gameplay in this so far. It's two very different concepts when mashed together and I really don't know if they complement each other the best. Again, it's not that one is better than the other, it's just that it feels so jarringly different as you go into this crawl and then you get thrown into the actual combat section only to get thrusted back into the dungeon crawl again and you're just like, I don't know, maybe. I will say for as bad as I am in some of those exploration phases, I do appreciate some of the puzzles that they have because admittedly I am really bad at puzzles and so any puzzle of substantial difficulty will be a significant challenge for me to solve and so I enjoy having that level of challenge. So overall, I do really, really like the gameplay that's going on in here. Albeit, I kind of question the exploration phases a little bit, but it's growing on me slowly but surely. I'm sure as time goes on, my opinion is going to lean more positive spinning, but right now I'm just kind of waiting and seeing how it overall works out in the full release of the game. Overall, not bad, but it's something that I'm just like, I'm waiting to see how it pans out in the full release. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about the agents that we can get in the game. Honestly, this was the part that I was kind of not sure what to expect with this. Again, I had the presupposition of it being a gacha game, and so immediately I was being braced for, okay, is it going to ask for my money immediately despite the fact that it was a beta? And fortunately, it has not asked for a single dime from me yet, and so I'm sure that that could possibly change once the game fully releases, but as of right now, this is just the agents of the game and how they give them to you in its pure form without having to spend any money on it thus far. And honestly, I love everything about it. From the character design and how they look, to the weapons that they use, and their stats, and the in-depth differences between each and every single agent and how they play with other agents, it's really cool to see the level of detail and care into them, and despite not playing any other previous HoYoVerse games, I really, really enjoy the designs that I'm seeing this far in the game. I had this negative stigma as to the quality of the characters because of this gacha style that I know is coming, but fortunately, overall, I did not see a single character that I did not enjoy or at least greatly appreciate the look and feel of as I was going throughout my time playing the game. It feels like there's a lot of different currencies going on in here, and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, but give it enough time and you'll familiarize yourself with the systems and what cost what, and afterwards you'll realize that the game, at least in its first couple hours in its first session, gives you a lot of currency that you can use to get yourself into the rhythm of unlocking other characters. And is that just a gateway drug for you to inevitably run out and then be like, hey, you can purchase these microtransactions so that way you can get more unlocks? Absolutely, I am fully aware of that. But that being said, again, it feels like they give you a good amount of currency in-game. That way you don't have to immediately be feeling like, oh man, I don't have a lot, or oh man, I'm, I should just shell out immediately. So far, it feels pretty balanced. And honestly, I love the level of diversity that's in the cast. Whether you want to be a shark girl or a wolf boy or just a freaking bear, you've got something for everybody here. And I think that that's really cool. Now, how hard might it be to get some of these characters? Well, I think we're just gonna have to wait and see about that. Maybe I'm gonna bite my tongue and then just later on down the line, they're gonna release a character that has a 0.5% drop rate and then it's gonna cost an arm and a leg because you know that you're not gonna get it on a pull and it's gonna take way too long if you grind in game to try and get that character. Who knows? Again, overall, as for what the test has shown me, I like it. I think that it's really cool. And as for the game overall, I can safely say that I love this game thus far. And I am so glad that I was wrong about my negative opinions about what HoYoVerse games are and the level of quality that they can be. Now, does that mean that I like gacha mechanics? No. And at least I can get this negative stigma out of my head that even though these games have gacha mechanics that are designed to just pull from your wallet, that it doesn't 
take away from the overall quality of the product, that the game is still fun to play, and that overall, from start to finish, you can have a good experience without really putting in that much money. Again, could it change, and could there be mechanics that come out when the full game releases that might change my opinion on it? Potentially. But that being said, as for what the game is at a base level, in its story, in its presentation, in its gameplay, I enjoy it. And that is what matters right now, is that the level of love that exists in just what is Endless Zone Zero is one that I can enjoy. But what about you? What do you think about the game? What has your experience been if you've been able to get into the test? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you've been most looking forward to about this game, and if you've been enjoying it or not. I've been putting a lot of time into this game, and so there might be another video to come, but we just have to wait and see. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Alright, take care. See ya!